Okay, so welcome. Uh, so tonight we have. Yes. Okay, it's okay. So tonight we have a special guest, uh, Professor Shalem Kulibali. Shalem is a, an old friend and colleague. He uh, is originally from Cote d'Ivoire. He studied philosophy at, in Poitiers with uh, the great uh, philosopher uh, Emmanuel Levinas. Uh, Shalem went on to uh, study and teach in Israel. He, um, he worked, studied in Yeshiva in uh, Jerusalem for many years. He taught art and philosophy at Tel Aviv University. He later went on to, uh, to Burkina Faso, where in Ouagadougou he helped to start a university and run the philosophy department. And he's the secretary general of the university. Uh, he just finished uh, writing a book. Where's the book? which is actually for sale. Uh, if anybody's interested, it's in French. It's called Dialogue avec la Nuque. Nuque. If anybody wants to, we can all pass it around. We just published it uh, a few weeks ago. And so, the, book, the book is getting uh, raised reviews open. in the uh, Francophone world. He's been on uh, important uh, national television discussions in France and in Africa. Uh, discussing his new book. So tonight he's going to speak about uh, issues of uh, racism and anti-Semitism and the work of, uh, in particular, Jean-Paul Sartre and Alain Baudieu, two important uh, French philosophers, and also how they relate to issues of anti-Semitism, Jewish thought, African thought, and racism. So it's an honor that you're here, and, and welcome, Shalem. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the Harvard University. I'm very, very happy to be a friend of Charles. We know each other from almost 20 years. He was teaching at Tel Aviv University at the same period as me. And now, uh, just the story of Isgabe and 20 less before he left Israel, he told me that we are to face, because it was in the beginning of uh, uh, Antifada, the last Antifada, he said that we have to do something against what is happened and what could happen to Israel and to everyone Jewish. In, in this world. So I think that I'm going to create some things to defend uh, Israel and Jewish. I say that is a good idea. And many, like uh, two years later, he starts at Yale University. And from the beginning to today, I'm happy to work with him, to share my ideas with him, or also to share my life and uh, friendship and brotherhood with him. Today, I, I don't want to be long, but uh, I want you to share something, some ideas with you concerning what is happening in France. It's because what is happening in France that I choose the titles uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and Badiou uh, about anti-Semitism, but about Jewish and Africans. So the title of my, my lecture is Jewish and Africans in Jean-Paul Sartre and Badu Perspectives. But when I say, I, I take the first word, Jewish and Africans, what that means? Why should, why should I can put in the same sentence or in the same title, Jewish and Africans? When we consider the period of East, uh, African independence to today, in the beginning, African state and Israel state were very friends. They worked together. Israel helped many countries to develop their agriculture. But uh, if we consider what happened now, 
it's like that two person would were married and now they divorce and uh, 10 days two weeks ago when people were shouting and making some movement in france people were shouting zionism outside of france and why i wanted first to speak about uh, another subject, and I, I decided to speak about Jewish and Africans. How can I justify the conjunction between Jewish and Africans? I already speak, uh, spoke about it, but I will, be, I will be short. The element for the two uh, words, African and Jewish, can be justified as a conjunction between two nations, two people, by different elements that come from history, that come from reality nowadays, reality, or also that can be can be considered by by taking into account great people from Israel, from Jewish side and from African side. The first element uh, I will give you for to justify these conjunctions is that if you consider the configuration of Israel, the demography of Israel today, from 1984 to today, the population of Israel have many, many black people by the cow, but they are Jewish Ethiopians. And their names uh, is, the, the well-known name is Falasha, but is, Beta Israel. But Falasha means stranger. So if you go to Israel, you'll see there is the Jewish, they are black, they are in the army, and they are the proof that uh, the conjunction of Jewish and Africans for the title of my lectures is justified because Jewish in 1984, they spend money, they paid African states, Sudan, Mauritania to save black, Africans black, Ethiopian life, to, to take them from Africa to Israel. Any kind, any state in Africa helped the Falasha, the Beta Israel. They were going to die, but Israel did it. Why Israel did it? Because Israel has the whole state and like the new state know that Africans are their brother uh, let's see how I say they are their brother for a long time in history. It's why the Falasha are the proof that Jewish and African can understand each another, they can fight and uh, speak together and make a dialogue together. The second proof that I, I can give is from, let's say, from big writer. I will take the side of uh, two, I will take two examples of African writer. One is uh, M. Césaire, the second one is uh, Franz Sanon. And after, I will take a quotation, uh, I will give another example, um, a name of someone which is Emmanuel Levinas, who is a master, who is a parent, like I'm considered like a, a member of his family, and I'm happy to be considered like this. If you take M. E. Césaire, he has the first, one of the first book, which is a, a poetry, book of uh, return to my native country. In this book, he calls himself a Jewish. He called him himself an African, a Negro. And he said that you Europeans, you kill Jewish, you burn them. You put us Africans into slavery. And today, you want we, you want to oblige us to tell you thank you, to say you thank you for not burning us, for not enslaving us today. And another way in uh, discourse of, uh, on colonialism, he said that Jewish and African don't have any uh, 
considerations or any kind of uh, greetings to give to Europeans. They have to be on their own. And the second one, Franz Fanon, in uh, Peau Noir, Max, uh, Max Blanc, uh, Black Skin, White Mask, he said that uh, when people start or trying to kill Jews, when people are accusing Jews, the first, the second in the list will be black people. That means that during the colonization period, or before the Shoah, or after the Shoah, European people were considering Jewish and African as the same. Pig, under, they were not human beings, they were just to be considered that under, under any kind of human beings. Levinas has a book, which is a totality and infinity. Venus writes about those who have been killed by the civilizations, the, the, by Europeans, the civilization. Levinas writes these books, this book is for those who have been killed, the millions of people who have been killed, and the other people who are suffering for the same logic, from the same Nazism ideology. With these three writers, we have another step or another way to think the conjunction, the possibility for Africans and Jews in Israel, in America, in Africa, in Europe to work together. We have basis. We have people who think that in order to separate, in order to be in conflict, we can work together because we start story before many, many other civilizations. So we can trust that if we are together and we try to have to fulfill the same goal, we can succeed. That I believe it. And uh, the proof, one other proof is with this, with Charles, we work together. The last examples that I, I'm going to give like conjunctions, come from history. I already spoke about it, but in story, but in a negative way, Europeans, Europeans, and mainly the intellectual Europeans make analysis, describes Jewish Africans like pigs, like with uh, the same blood, uh, I, I don't have this book here, but uh, there is a, a good book written uh, in uh, 18, uh, The Antisemitism of uh, European Writer by uh, Targiev and other person. In that book, you can see pictures, you can see, you can re <coughs> read anthropologists, you can read philosophers who say that, you know, Jewish, they are not white, they are little Asians from Asia. But if you consider them, there are some car black characteristics. So if you want, you don't want, other people see Jewish and African like the same genetic call or the same human beings. So why should we fight each another? That is the question. For me, it's very, not because of this justification, but we have all the reason to be together and to defend each another. The same thing can be do, uh, done with uh, another. Jewish can be working with, with Christian. We have there are association between Jewish and, and Christians. So it's not a problem that as a Jewish, I work with the Christian for peace. And as a Jewish, I work with uh, African for peace. As a Jewish, I work with Indian for peace. As a Jewish, I can work with other people just for peace. So after the justification of these uh, conjunctions, I came now to the two philosophers, to Jean-Paul Sartre and uh, Badiou. 
what I'm going to do for the both philosopher is to just give some definitions of antisemitism according both philosopher and to make the conclusions. I will base uh, the, the quotation come from Jean-Paul Sartre books, Reflections on Jewish Question. And the other books of Alain Badiou is Antisemitism in France Today. But before speaking about giving the definition of antisemitism, I would like to, to, to just speak about something that I didn't talk about in the beginning. But is a subtitle on the title of uh, Badiou books on, on, on antisemitism. Why Badiou say antisemitism in France today? The book was written in uh, uh, 12, uh, 11, okay, 2011. Why in France? Why in France today antisemitism is become so hard? Why do racism become staff in France? Why a minister in France was insulted like a monk, considered like a monk? Why 10 days ago, people were shouting in France, Zionist outside, Zionist capitalist, Zionist uh, are captured France. Why? I will just give two examples, it's historical examples. If you consider the idea in Europe uh, about racism and anti-Semitism, you will see that France is a leading country concerning anti-Semitism and racism. One of the father, one of the, the paragon of anti-Semitism and uh, racism in France is Gobineau, Lord Gobineau. He is a man who wrote, who wrote a book about the inequality of races, of race. And in this book, this book has become, between the two are, the reference of all the anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic, anti-Semit writer, French writer. So if today anti-Semitism and racism become, uh, come back in France, it's because they have these traditions of categorizing people by considering people like subhuman beings. It's why today anti-Semitism is coming for social or social reason, but mainly because of philosophical and because of French intellectual. After the Shoah, now I'm coming to describe uh, Jean-Paul Sartre's approach of anti-Semitism. After the Shoah, there were a, prob a moral problem for European people. They didn't wonder why they killed six millions. They didn't wonder why they make colonizations. No, the question was not. They didn't ask themselves why we treat our own citizens as animals. Why we, they didn't ask themselves why we burn them. They just say that we have to build up our country anew. What they were, the aim was to build up a new France. <coughs> the nationalism, French nationalism, is the reason for why today anti-Semitism is coming back. And it's why a minister of the current government can be insulted like a monk. Because anti-Semitism and racism is a part of French modern nation. I, I won't speak about the Middle Age when they expelled many times Jewish, but I just take the modernity as a reference. So Jean-Paul Sartre, after the Shoah, tried also to repair, to repair what 
France did wrong. That means to try to think about the problems that concern the problem between Jewish and, and uh, 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 French people, French. The first definition he gave, he said that antisemitism is a synthetic, a synthetic reality. This reality is based on the, the, the class, social class. First of all, there, are, there is a people, there are peasants, bourgeois, and the proletarians. Okay? Those people make a choice, make the anti-Semitism choice. It's why it was possible in France to kill Jewish. So he wanted to go inside of, of the roots of anti-Semitism. And in his book, his attack and he's analyzed the metaphysic element of anti-Semitism. The first element, he said that anti-Semitism is a free choice. Un libre choix. Un libre choix est total de soi-même. It's, it's a total and free choice for myself, according to my social class. And the antisemitism, the antisemitism in France is a kind of faith and hatred of order. Because the antisemite, the antisemite is a man who thinks that he's a, like a rock. He doesn't want to move. And his choice is like eternity choice. And the antisemite, he said, mieux encore, c'est en face du juif et du juif seul que l'antisémite se réalise comme sujet de droit. He said that in France, if we have antisemitism, is because the antisemite become a subject of a nation, a subject of right, only facing Jewish, he compare himself to Jewish, only to Jewish. That is the first definition you can find in the first, uh, in the page 22 of his book. And he said that as a, if we consider modernity, and politics, we have to know that even in democracy, Jewish is not considered like a free person. Democracy is not sufficient to defend Jewish rights because it was in democratic country that the brown people, it was French democratic state who make who put people in slavery and make colonization. But if you read Jean Paul Sartre concerning black and Jewish in his book, I will take two examples in his book. The first one consider the relation between body sex, the subject, and the object. Jean-Paul Sartre makes the analysis of the body. And he gives the example of someone who has a girlfriend who is Jewish. First, he doesn't know that she was Jewish. But when he learned that she is a Jewish, he starts to reject her. And he asks, why come this rejection? Why come the hatred? He said, because the rejection, l'expulsion, le rejet, come from the mind, from, come from the decision, come from a total choice. 
I will read it in French. Il y a un dégoût du juif comme, si, comme il y a un dégoût du chinois ou du nègre chez certains gens. There is a kind of hatred. Uh, I don't know. I didn't have time to translate it. Uh, there is a kind of rejection of the Jewish, of the Chinese people and the Negro by certain French people. Is not this rejection doesn't come from the body. Ce n'est donc pas du, du corps que naît cette repulsion. Puisque vous pouvez aimer une juive si vous, si vous ignorez sa race. You can love, you can fall in love with a Jewish woman if you don't take into account a race. Mais elle vient du corps. Racism, antisemitism, the rejections of Jewish and Africans come from the mind, as he told, is a free decision. It comes from the mind to the body. It's, c'est un engagement de l'âme. It's a, a free engagement um, of the soul. Of the soul. from the soul. It's so deep and total that it becomes something from the body. C'est tellement profond et si total qu'il s'étend au physiologique. So, you see, another conjunctions between Jewish and Africans. Here, I won't go inside of philosophical problem of a sex uh, body, but just you can take here an example of the problems that Jewish and Africans can pose Face facing an European of an antisemitist, anti, an antisemit and anti, a, a racist. The second example is is a, a quotation that you find in the the last part of uh, Jean Paul Sartre's books. He said that. As the African American writer Richard Wright wrote, il n'y a pas de problème noir aux États-Unis. Il n'y a qu'un problème blanc. There is no black pro there is no black problem in the United States. There is only a problem, a white problem. And Jean Paul Sartre continue. Nous dirons de la même de la même façon que l'antisémitisme n'est pas un problème juif. In the same way, we'll say that antisemitism is not a problem of a Jewish problem. It's our, say not problem, it's our problems. Because, puisque nous sommes coupables et que nous ne risquions pas d'en être nous aussi les victimes. Et que nous risquions d'en être nous aussi les victimes. Il faut que nous soyons aveugles pour ne pas voir que c'est notre affaire en premier. Antisemitism is not the problem of Jewish. It's not Jewish problems. It's our, is underline our. That means our French people, our European people, our Western people. This is our problems. It's not Jewish and African problems. But if we don't stand against if we don't stand against antisemitism, if we don't come, uh, uh, fight antisemitism, we'll become victims of our own free choice. From, there is many references, quotations that you can find in the book uh, according uh, on black and Jewish in Jean Paul Sartre's books. But I just give the two examples. But Jean Paul Sartre, is, he, he was a clever philosopher. He was a bourgeois, but he's a bourgeois who stands for weak in a society, for minority in society, till to the communist ideology. He was believing in communism. He think that to solve Jewish problem too, as a European, as a French guy, communism will become the solution. Because communism, communi communism is above race, 
is about ideology, but even if it's ideology. He think that the Jewish, uh, or the question of Jewish question can be solved in some of uh, big, big ideology, which is communist. That is, was a problem. But as he was very clever, and he has many people, young people, African people, and Jewish people who were surrounding him, he went to the end of his way of thinking, his conception or his approach of Jewish and African uh, problems in Europe, mainly in France. So after this, this two approach in Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, philosophy, that the first one was his definition of um, anti-Semitism. The second one was the approach of black by two ways. One is by the body, the rejection of Jewish and black body, even Chinese too. The third element is uh, what is called the troisième element is, uh, I say the first one is the body, the second one is um, the fructures of um, uh, French people, and the third element is the nature of anti-Semitism and racism. He said that uh, concerning black and Jew, uh, Jewish and black, he said that the problem of racism and anti-Semitism is not, is not Jewish and African problems. It is those who create anti-Semitism. It is those who make the, theo the theory of anti-Semitism. They have to solve it. And, you, uh, and to come to the solution, at the end of the book, Jean-Paul Sartre gave his own solution how to solve, how to deal with the problem of anti-Semitism as a responsibility of Europeans' problem, as a problem of Europeans and the Europeans' responsibility. He said that I learned at the end of the book, uh, uh, it's uh, page 161. I learned that uh, Jews create an association in order to defend themselves. I'm very glad for it. That means that there is authentic Jewish who can now fight for themselves. But I don't, I'm not sure if this association, association can be successful. So for me, it's not for Jewish to create this kind of association. It's we Europeans, French, we have to create it. If si seulement leur ami, la cause des, Israel, des Israelites serait à moitié gagné si seulement leurs amis trouvaient pour les défendre un peu de passion et de la persévérance que leurs ennemis mettent à les perdre. He said that we can fight successfully anti-Semitism if Jewish friends in France, in England, in Spanish, in Portugal, they have the same free choice, a total free choice to fight, to combat anti-Semitism, as the enemies of Jewish and African are doing. They have to have the patience to fight and to combat uh, anti-Semitism. That is his solution. You see, first he said that anti-Semitism is not a Jewish problem. But the solution is European who have to create the condition to defend Jewish. But it's not for him sufficient that Jews themselves have to be alone to defend themselves. But the, the, today's situation is that Jews are alone in Europe to defend themselves. They are alone to defend themselves. That is something that it seemed to me that Europeans didn't learn from their own story. They didn't face their past. They refuse to face the past. That is one of the another reasons, a part of what I say about uh, intellectuals, uh, tradition, anti-Semitism, and racism tradition. That is another reason that anti-Semitism and racism are strong 
and stronger in France. Because French people don't, don't want to face the story. They don't want to see themselves in the, in the mirror. They want just to solve or to take care about their own nations. And this is why today you can see that people are shouting Zionists outside. Uh, people can also insult black people. And uh, I just want to give another example that is as is happened three months ago. There were a former minister of culture of Mali, the state of Mali is in Africa. She's a leftist, she's uh, working with, uh, and she, when French people went to Mali to fight against the Tuareg, she, she wrote an article and asked if the French operation will not turn into colonizations, or the colonizations of Mali. Do you know what happened to her? When she, she tried to go back to France, they refused to give her a visa. Just because, freely, she put into a question, she asked whether French people are not going to colonize a part of Mali, perhaps for what we have in the soil, in the ground, to take it. So they refused that French, which is the state of human, human rights, they refused to give to a, a former minister of culture who participate to francophony meetings, France and his colony meetings that are called francophony, they refuse to give her a visa. So that is a free decision of a state who don't want, who, who don't want to see people thinking freely, speaking freely, sharing the idea, even its opposite idea. So after these definitions of antisemitism, after uh, the uh, conjunction between black and Jewish in Jean-Paul Sartre, after the solution that Sartre gave, and the solution for Jean-Paul Sartre is, first, is negative solution. Jews don't have to be alone to fight antisemitism. That is not positive affirmation, but is a negative affirmation. But is the positive persons in engagement for Jewish. The second is say that those who want to combat and to be, those who have Jewish friends have to stand by Jewish and to create organizations we can be successfully fight anti-Semitism. Now the, diff, the, the last, last, last element that Jean-Paul Sartre finds as a solution, a final solution, that is, that is lie in the future of European. If they don't look at it, if they don't think about it, the society can disappear tomorrow. And that is Sartre's solution for uh, fighting uh, racism, anti-Semitism. Uh, that is very important. I will read it, excuse me, I will read it in French so that those who catch French can understand it and I will translate it because I didn't have time to translate it. Pas un seul Français ne sera libre tant que les Juifs ne, jureront, ne jouiront pas de la, de la plénitude de leurs droits. No one French French guy can be free if Jews don't have all the rights in France. All the rights, he put all the rights. They have to feel totally free in France. If the Jews don't feel secure in France, there is no way for a French guy to be free. Pas un Français ne sera en sécurité tant qu'un Juif en France et dans le monde entier, et underlines monde entier, pourra craindre pour sa vie. He said that, that is very important. No, no, no one French guy will be in security if there is only one Jew who is not in security in France or in the world. 
and in other land in the world. And if only there is a Jew, we can be afraid for his life, for his life. So I'm going to sum up uh, to make a resume of what I did and go back to uh, the other philosopher, Alain Badiou. So the, I tried to, con to justify the conjunction, the first word, Jewish and Africans, in the title. I give some elements who are from my own view, but in France, in uh, Jean Paul Sartre's uh, uh, philosophy, I, I returned, first of all, uh, it compare Jewish and Africans in the meeting with an European physically by the problem of the body, okay? It happened that the hatred, the racism, and the anti-Semitism of uh, French people come from their minds. And because it's, it comes from their mind, it comes from their free decisions and total decisions, the hatred, they decide to hatred, to hate Jewish and Africans. Okay? That is the first conjunction. The second conjunction that I find which is interesting for my own work is that uh, Jean Paul Sartre states that uh, the problem of racism and anti Semitism is not a problem of black, it's not black problems, it's not Jewish problems, it's Europeans' problems. They have to solve it. Okay? But here he took, he made two elements. He took an example from African Americans and mixed it with his own perspective. Okay? And the second element uh, that for the justification of um, my thesis, uh, for the conjunction between African and Jewish, is that. Jewish and African don't have to be alone to fight racism and anti-Semitism. It's European who have to work to help those minority in France. Because Jewish and African are minority in France. I'm not going to to go inside of uh, uh, the existentialism uh, methods and way of uh, analyzing things that Jean Paul Sartre used here to compare Jewish and African because we can work on it in uh, a conceptual way, but uh, it's not uh, the, the, now my, my work. And Jean Paul Sartre's last solutions, even he said that no French guy will be free, totally free, if they don't stand uh, help Jewish to fight anti-Semitism, his last, last, last solution, which is bad solutions, uh, which uh, according to what Levinas said that uh, Sartre even, I like uh, the way he defends us with uh, his book, but he didn't understand much thing, thinking that uh, the problem or the situation of Jewish is the same situation of the, the workers or proletarians. Because using communism is that to put Jewish faith, Jewish life under communism and proletarians and worker conditions. That is not the thing. Because the worker can claim, use the law of the state to defend himself. But when you are going to kill me and to burn me in the same state, I mean the citizen, who can defend me? So it's not the same. It's not. That is uh, some things. But as a leftist, Jean-Paul Sartre are the, those who were, were the third mondist. They help, they, la they love minorities, they love black, they love uh, uh, people from the third world. Even uh, they, they love too much this minority that they think that they have to be the leader of this minority. And Alain Badiou, think in the same way. He is a leftist. He is a man of gauche, the left. He is a, a philosopher, 
trying to become like Sartre, but he can't. He read some interesting book. Even he can be is a genius. But Levinas said that uh, sometimes genius people can be white people and less than beast and animal in the case of Heidegger. Because Levinas said that we can forgive to some right for think some to some people, but we cannot forgive to the intelligence and the skill philosopher like Heidegger. If someone can forgive to Heidegger for his participation to Nazism uh, ideology, to the destruction of the Jewish, I can't. Levinas wrote it dans les imprévus de l'histoire. So, Badiou is also a leftist. Okay, Badiou, I will give, I will go fast. Badiou, I will give Badiou the definition of uh, antisemitism. Badiou say that antisemitism, antisemitism is like a fiction, a fiction built up by the Jews themselves in order first to oblige Jewish people to make the aliyah. Secondly, is a fant a fant a fant phantasmagoric. It means that it doesn't exist. In opposite, Jean-Paul Sartre said that anti-Semitism exists. It was created by European people. In Badiou, he said that no, it doesn't exist. It create it 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 is created by Jewish themselves. And these anti-Semitists don't have any kind, any kind, any relation with reality. For eux, it means that those who use anti-Semitism, like uh, uh, those who speak about uh, anti-Semitism who is growing up in Europe, he say, for eux, dans cette traque de l'antisémitisme fantasmatique, il y a du grain et du pouvoir à gagner en tant que bon petit soldat de la marche au pire. That means that the antisémitisme is just in Jewish mind. It's a fantasmagoric. Fant it's not reality. If there is reality, it's like a plateau idea. But just Jews instrumentalize it. And therefore, his way of considering black and Africans in his, in his, in his book is is to say that young, young black and uh, young Arabs are proletarians. They come from third worlds. Why should you accuse them for uh, anti-Semitism when they are insulting Jews in, the, in, in France? You don't understand that is a political uh, cry, they are shouting, they are in a political uh, step. So what, what you, when you accuse them for the fiction of anti-Semitism, you are just in making business with the word anti-Semitism. Du point de vue empirique, in an empiric, empirical way, la construction d'une montée de l'antisémitisme en France est un argument important en direction des Juifs pour les pousser à faire leur alia à partir de pour partir s'installer en Israël. Les traqueurs d'un antisémitisme fantasmé se connaissent eux-mêmes. Those who are fighting the anti-Semitism know themselves. 
What is a, a bad use solutions? In, at the end of his book, which is like uh, six, 60 pages, at the end of his book, he said that today, the problem facing those who are, uh, those who are instrumentalizing antisemitism is not to hear them, is not just to stand, is to be offensive. So when Jean Paul Sartre has an empathic movement, a kind of uh, uh, trying to be friends and trying to understand antisemitism, Badiou has, has, is denying antisemitism and is trying to say that we have to fight Jewish who use antisemitism like a business, like a way to gain power in France. So what is my conclusion? The conclusions that I want to, to, to give is that in, after the Shoah and before the independences of Africa, Africans intellectuals, as well as some Jewish writer, were thinking that Jewish and Africans were the same, or they were, it was possible to build and to work, it was possible for them to work together. But nowadays, after uh, before one decade, one decade ago, there is problem between Jewish and Africans. So my conjunctions is like I'm trying to call people, listen to me, listen to my voice, uh, be kind, kiss each another, because among those who were shouting, crying, shouting, Zionists, death to the Zionism outside of France, there were black people. There were, there were people from Africa, or people, black people uh, born in France. So it's, it showed that if really we want to, to live freely, as free human beings, I think we don't have to be in the logic of dividing people, but we have to be in logic to making people come together, to gather people. That is my way of thinking. Thank you. <laughs> Question, if there is? Yes. We do, what do you think we can do here to help the situation in France? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, I forgot because uh, my, my, one of my friends, very close friends, also like uh, 20, and we were studying together in uh, Israel. And in Paris, we used to read together. We've, we make many things together and uh, asked me when I will be here and making my seminars or my lectures, I have to call people to remind them that the situations today is not a, like a simple situation, is not a philosophical debate today in France. It's not only a debate or intellectual debate. Some people among those who are shouting they are ready, as, uh, as Mera did, they are ready to take guns, arms against Jews. They are ready to kill. They, they are ready today, if you follow them in the internet, you will see they are ready today to take arms. And my friend, Michael Seban, asked me to tell you that don't just listen news. Don't think that it's an intellectual debate. Don't think that it will pass. We are in a, 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 in a dangerous and important moment. So we have to, to, to see that the worst can happen. Before the Shoah, some people were saying, no, it cannot happen. How? It cannot happen. No, no, no. When the, the Italian was uh, saying that we are going to clean 
Jewish, uh, uh, Europe from all these Jewish? Oh no, it's not possible. Among, even among Jewish, today remind only stupid persons forget this story. You have to remind that it all is possible concerning human beings. Everything is possible. So I just I'm a Shalia. I'm a man who, who to who Sebansi tell them you have to be engaged. You have to to find people. Black people, African people who are open in America to stand. When there is a manifestation against Jewish there, you have, you have to make a counter manifestation. That is it. And also one of my solutions that is 20 years ago is that you have to create associations between Jewish intellectual and black intellectual to meet, to speak about everything, problems, uh, uh, slavery, uh, anti-Semitism, you have to create a, a, a kind of web between friends, you, you understand? And to meet and to speak. When people start to speak each another, they can solve problems. That is my second solution. My third solution, is everyone's, as uh, France Fanon say, when they start to beat Jewish, to, to accuse Jewish, to insult Jewish, the second in the list are the black. I will make, I will turn the things in direct way. That's I'm a philosopher. I will say that. When they start insulting black, when they start accusing black, Jews have to stand with black. That is a way. Even people think that is not possible because of if sorry. We can overcome his story. We can overcome difficulty. And when you start to make meeting between people, black and Africans, Amer African American, it will be very hard. Because some will say, we are Jewish. You, what is your interest to come to speak to me? And the Jewish in the world said, you are African. What do you want from me? You want my money? Or the Jewish? You know, it will be hard. OK? But the, the reality comes from the mind. The reality is the dreams will, come, will become reality. I'm in America. Malditation make a dreams. Now the dreams become a part of a reality. So what I'm telling is not philosophy. What I'm telling is not something of idealism. I'm telling with it's a pragmatic solution. Start to make association. Start to speak each another. You'll speak with one person, that is sufficient. You'll speak with two persons, Africans, Americans, two, just two persons, it's very interesting. So what you can do is to create an association that could be an annual or two annual, biannual meeting between African Americans intellectual and Jewish intellectual. That is possible. And when the head of community start to speak each another, it will give good fruit. That is reality. Another question? Yes? It's, it's OK for you? Yes. Yes? Uh, what is the, uh, how does the current economic situation in France influence this reemergence of anti one question. The second question, if I may, Professor, is what is the role of the church in this current situation? OK. Um, I will start with uh, the last question. You know that uh, uh, the, theology, the, uh, the theological antisemitism is a trick. C'est un piège. It never ends because Jewish and Christians, even in Ma with Muslims, there is a problem of theological problems. Levinas used the word of substitution. Christians think that they are the real Jews. And after Muslims comes, Islam comes, they say that we are the real monotheism. Because we, we are the perfect monotheism. This you cannot hand it because as Jean-Paul Sartre 
The anti-Semitism is a free and total choice. Is the faith. I believe that what my my free my choice is the right ones. So you cannot hand with uh, anti-Judaism. You cannot hand with the theological trick. But you can make interpretations. But not all the, all the monotheism has the power to make new interpretation with the text. Okay, because sometimes they believe in the text like. Uh, Okay, but uh, some religions can make a new interpretation and to change the, I think some Christians, uh, they, they try to do, but it's not right now. And among those, the meeting uh, they make uh, 10 days ago, there were extremes, Catholics among peoples and extreme leftists among peoples. Out come to to be possible that those people who hate each another come together. Is, if you answer to the question, you can understand why uh, your first question, uh, your first questions. I think, I don't think that economical situation justify to hate someone. There is not just taken to hate, to be anti semitic to be anti-Semite, to be racist, is not of, of economical situation. Everyone is starving. We, everyone is in the same situation. Do you think that all the Jewish in France, they are rich? You, do you think that all the black are starving in France? No. So economical situations cannot justify the anti-Semitism, or that cannot justify the racism. So the arguments. Some people say just not to face their own hatred, their own metaphysical choice, their own world visions. They don't face themselves. It's why they will find justifications. I'm a poor, I'm a proletarian, I'm, I, I come from the, uh, X uh, places, uh, my, my economical situation. That is no justifications to hate someone because of economical reason. There is no justification because I was enslaved to hate someone. There is no justification to hate. Um, there is no justification to hate someone because of economic situation. I don't think that that is just a pretext. It's not the, the base. When you see people who are natural, opposite, anti antagonist, they come together, shouting together. The 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 real Hems is not a communicable hem. We know the crisis is for all the world. Why in France? I give some elements. It's okay? The answer satisfies you? Thank you. What, what is your perspective on the demonstrations in Israel by African refugees? And also what is uh, just. The, the demonstrations. Speak a, a little louder. Uh, in Tel Aviv, there yes. are African refugees mm -hmm. who are protesting their treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering what your perspective on Israeli citizens, in their perspective on many of them wish them to be expelled, and then the African refugees are protesting that they are being treated in a racist manner. Do you have a perspective on that situation? OK, that is a uh, small things. And that is uh, also a trick, anti-Semitism and anti-Zionist trick. I didn't quote in the, uh, the first question. You know, it, how, do you know how many people, black people, are expelled, are being expelled, are expelling, French expelled every day to Africa? Do you know the number? Do you check the number? Do you check in number? Why, when in a modern state, a small space, you want Jewish to be the perfect state, not to expel those who are the hand of the right to be there? Who? Why? Why should they don't expel? I will tell you. When there were Africans, I come from Africans. I was in Israel. I was working with uh, people. We take care about uh, uh, refugees. 
uh, and there were many, when Avricos was uh, crossing his uh, bad periods, Israel state welcomed many Ivorians. Now the hands are in Africa, the why is handed. So those who can stay legally in Israel, they are still living in Israel. But those who were just accepted because of the war situation in Africa, they asked them to go back. Okay? So sometimes people make confusions. People want Israel to be a perfect state, but they don't regard what they do. How many people they expel? Roms, black, Arabs. How many people, French people, state expels every day? Go to Charles de Gaulle airport. They put medals on their hands. Why should Israel did has to do differently? Even in Africa, sometimes they expel their own brother. Africans, they, they expel, Africans expel many people from, Waga, from Burkina Faso, from Togo. You are not uh, Ivorian, so go back home. Why should Israel be the perfect state? They don't have to expel people. Why should Israel become the, uh, the place where if, if you enter, you have to stay there without any, any kind of right, any kind of uh, uh, respecting the legal Situation? No. This, it was the expulse. When there were problems, Nigerian problems, many Nigerians were living in Tel Aviv. When I was in Israel, they start to expose some Ivorians. Ivorians make a, make a demonstration. Better, Africans in Israel are always be friends. The Ivorians say, but we are friends. Uh, why you can expel us? Uh, we, for when you love Israel, in Israel love and every no, no. If you become now tomorrow politicians in Israel or in any kind of state, you have to be responsible and be responsible. Now the war in Sudan it finish, so they can go back. Those who can stay, it, they can stay, and that is my perspective. Don't ask Israel to be the, the pure and the perfect state. This argument is like, uh, I don't say it's anti-Semite uh, position, but uh, it's not relevant for me. Yes? I saw um, something on Shalom TV. John Voight. Can you speak loudly? John Voight, uh, the actor, spoke at a gala for a hospital in Israel. And he said his, he felt that Israel was the conscience of the world. And he spoke eloquently. And, and I wonder if that maybe is the reason that people expect Israel to open their arms to everyone and uh, accept everyone even though they can't, you know, which would be totally irresponsible. And I wonder about the role of shame. That's a question I wanted to ask you. I, I think that our culture is, that we live in a shame-based society. Like you said, people don't want to face their history. They don't want to face themselves. They don't want to say the economy is bad because we have corrupt politicians or we're not working hard enough. They, they just want to blame the other. And so, because if I can blame the other, then, it's, then I don't have to feel shame. Can you comment about that? First of all, uh, for the first element of your questions, I don't think that Israel is the center of morality or is the ethic basis of the humanity because it can be considered like a, a racism in the universe. Why should you are the master of ethic? Who, who give this right? So as a philosopher, I think that no one is uh, the master of ethics or moral or of uh, good behavior. Now with his questions, if you turn back his question, people ask Israel to be the perfect state and you 
You give the argument to people, ah, you are the master of ethics, you are the guardian of ethics, so, no. As a philosopher, I, I read words, and behind every word, I, can, I try to understand what is not wrong, what is, not, what is wrong. Here, I think that I, I, it's a problematics. But to, it's a problematic. Well, let me ask you though. Yes. I mean, people, the, one of his arguments was who warns people in a war situation that there are going to be rockets coming over so that the citizens aren't, who, who what, kind, what other country warns people? What other country takes in the enemy quote unquote, the Hamas's granddaughter in a hospital and treats her? What other country helps the Syrians, you know, on the, uh, quietly in hospitals so that, uh, what other country goes, is the first country to help in Haiti? First of all, I think that many country, Western country do, uh, did it when there is something in the world they come and they do it. But to give you a positive answer to your question, I would say that Israel, Israeli consider the state as an open state. And the metaphysical basis of this open state is that it has to be like uh, when the temple was, uh, was existing, Everyone from every nation was able to come to make a sacrifice in the temple. Do you know why, just to answer you, do you know why David, the king, didn't build the temple? Because he has blood in his hands. Do you know why Solomon created the temple? Because he was wise and was following the word of God. So, in the Jewish metaphysical approach, Israel has to become an open place. It's why people, when I was in Africa, they don't understand why Jewish people or Jewish were going to the border, taking children, Syrian children, Syrian, uh, Syrian soldiers, and heal them. I say no, because Jewish themselves, they say that uh, if there is no man, no moral and ethic man who stands, and you are to be the last man, human beings be, remain the last human beings. That is the old metaphysic. But it's not the same to say that the Jewish are the master of the moral or no. They own, they want that the hand of the state, when the state will be in peace, it has to be open state state. That is their own choice, their own political and metaphysical choice. But you cannot oblige them to do anything. This, as a philosopher, I'm, I, I'm against those, those who want to use my word to oblige me to do some things. This, I was quoting what this actor, John Boyd, said. I wasn't I'm not saying that's my philosophy. No, 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 I don't. That's, no, I understand it's not through you. Another question? No question. Anybody else? Okay. I'll end it here. You, you have a question for me? No. Oh, you have something else you want to say? Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming. And I hope that you, my English is not perfect. And uh, when I will stay one month, I will uh, make my English more perfect. I will speak like American, you know. When I'm in Africa, we speak like American, and we like America, you know. <laughs> that is my son who would like to speak like this, because he said that when I'm speaking French, uh, English, is like uh, African French English. <laughs> so excuse me. <laughs> very good. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, thank you for coming. So the next event is March the 11th with Matthias Kunzel. Is a leading uh, German scholar. His expertise is on Iran. It should be good. So, I hope you guys come and thank you very much.